Okay, today is uh, April the 23rd, 5.23 p.m. This is Jamie Griffin, a beautiful friend I love very much. And uh, she's going to tell us a story of, um, of uh, where she's been for the last year and, give me just a little bit better, and uh, how she's been feeling lately and some symptoms that she's been experiencing and so forth. And it's a really intriguing story. And Jamie uh, fits a pattern of, the, of problems that is classic for what we've been seeing. So why don't you start off explaining to the uh, audience what what your uh, uh, what your job was and where you were well, in, since the oil spill. When the oil spill happened, um, they sent me down to Grand Isle. Who's in, they? Uh, my company. Okay. Uh, they had a contract with BP. They were renting one of our yards, and they sent our crew down there to cook for the guys that were working on the cleanup and wash their clothes and clean up after them their rooms and we had to live on the floating hotel with them. That was at the very beginning of May, like right after the oil spill. Okay, tell them about how they came in with things on the clothes and so forth. Well, when I first got down there, um, we had the problem with them coming in in the work clothes because our yard was being used as a decon location. They would pull the boats up and they would clean the bottoms off and they would wear Tyvek suits and boots. And some of them would remove the suits, but they would walk in still with the boots and stuff on, and they would track this sludge-looking stuff and all some over of, the some floor. Of them and the some of them still, they suit. would just fold them down because yeah. they didn't want to totally get out of them and remove everything. So they would fold them down so they weren't eating, yeah. touching it, but they still had them on. And they would come in, and I was having a big problem on the floor, like trying to clean it, and I didn't know what... I didn't want to put any kind of chemicals, pine saw or bleach or anything on that to make some kind of reaction. So when one of the when I saw that it was becoming a major problem, we had twelve hundred people going in and out this location daily, daily twelve hundred feet, you know. Wow. So I questioned one of the BP reps because they always had a BP rep, a medic, like a whole crew would stay <laughs> on the job site. I questioned him one day. I said, What can I clean? the floor because I don't want to I had been doing it with just plain water because I wasn't sure about the reaction there was no MSDS sheet on whatever this was that they using and that's you know I wasn't yeah. combusting something so he told me oh you can clean that with regular floor cleaner anything that y'all would normally use because the chemicals we use are just as safe as dorm dishwashing detergent he told me the chemicals weren't dangerous so I cleaned them up like I would clean up any other kind of mess and we did this for seven months. I start like after about a month that I was there. Then back up. You wash clothes. You wash all yes, those clothes. Yes, we wash not for twelve hundred people, but for the immediate crew that stayed on. Only the ones that lived on our floating hotel, because we housed uh, thirty, about thirty three people on the hotel. So for seven months, you clean, you wash the clothes of thirty, at least thirty employees. Right, but we washed all of theirs, all of ours, and all of bosses that lived in the camps, like they would rent out camps, but they didn't want to have to wash their clothes. So they would, I'd tell them, bring it to me in a bag and when I have time, I'll wash it for you. So we did about 50 people's clothes, anywhere from 33 to for 50. For seven months. For seven months. My symptoms went from the nosebleeds to respiratory, ear infections, throat infections. Sometimes like my throat would feel like I had swallowed razor blades. It would get like so sore. And I had seen you several times when I'd come back and forth from Grand Isle because I didn't know what else to do because I kept getting respiratory infections and sick. It went from that to they told me I was having anxiety. I had severe chest pains. My heart was beating like 150 beats per minute. I was having severe sweating. They told me I was exhausted and I was having an anxiety attack. They took me to the emergency room, which I stayed there for a few hours. They hooked me up to the machine. They did an EKG. The doctor told me that was the prettiest EKG he had ever seen in his life. He was going to frame it and hang it on his wall. He said, your heart's fine. He said, it's stress. You work too many hours. It's a stressful situation down there. They even made me talk to somebody. They thought that it was the, the stress of being there was affecting me. They gave me a counselor and, you know, all this good stuff. They sent me back to work. So it's all, can you, do you realize what they're doing? They're trying to tell you that a real physical illness is a psychological illness. Right. Those well, they just... believe that because, I mean, we were working long hours, mm -hmm. like, but which I'm used to. I kind of, you know, tried to take better care of myself, but I still kept getting sick. I started with muscle spasms. I get sometimes the cramps in my legs and I get them in my ribs. Like it felt like I couldn't breathe. I would 
like when I'd breathe in, it would like tighten up and I'd have spasms. I would twitch. My eyes started twitching. Well, they called the medic one day because I couldn't even get out of bed because the muscle spasms were so bad. So Jessica ran into the galley, got the radio, and called the medic. She came in and told me that I ate too many pickles, that I over potassiumed myself. <laughs> and <laughs> she said it was either that or a lack of potassium. She wasn't sure which one. It was a potassium problem. That's what the cramps were stemming from. So I got all the pickles because I love pickles. So I quit eating the pickles. <laughs> then it went from uh, those symptoms to other things. I started sweating at night. I'd wake up soaking wet. I felt, sometimes I would feel like confused. Like I could remember what was going on, but it seemed fuzzy. Like I couldn't stay on top of what I was supposed to be doing every day. I It was supposed to be grocery order day and I would totally forget. My, my guy would call me and say, Jamie, you got the grocery order? And I'd be like, oh my God, I forgot to make that. So I'd have to hurry up and go make the grocery order. And I mean, I've been doing this kind of job for a long time and I've never not been on top of my job. So it, it started, you know, gradually I thought, man, I'm just so tired and under so much stress here that I just, I can't keep it together. So I was talking to my aunt one day when I was off and I told her what was going on with me. I said, I just don't feel good all the time. I feel, I feel sick. I'm, I'm tired all the time. I get muscle spasms, night sweats. I said, and I can't remember what I'm doing sometimes. So she got me a planner. She said, you need to slow down. You're doing too much. You're trying to take on too many responsibilities. She said, get a calendar, write it in the calendar. She said, once you see how many things you have to do, you'll tend to do less things because it looks like so much on paper. So she thought that that would solve my problem. So she got me a planner. So I started writing everything in a calendar to keep me on track. Well, my symptoms progressed. I got sicker and sicker. I started missing more work. They had to eventually take me off a straight time and put me on 14 and 7 because I was so tired that I needed those seven days just to get back. And before I was working 50, 60 straight days at 18, 20 hours a day with no days off. And once I felt like my body just couldn't handle it anymore, I told them I wanted to come home. And that was in October. So I stayed there from May the very beginning of May to the very end of October. It was right around Halloween when I came home. And I told my boss at my regular location, I said, I just need a couple of weeks to pull myself together before I come back to my regular job. I said, because I, I had passed everything off that had been happening to me as sure. I just overexhausted myself and I brought my immune system down. So I took two weeks off. I pulled myself together. I thought I got a lot of rest, which when I get a lot of rest, I do feel much better. So... I was feeling fine so I went back to work then I worked 12 hours a day there then I started before I could do a 14 day shift 12 hours a day and never be affected my seven days would come they need me to work over I say sure I'll work over it came to where I wouldn't even work over on my seven days off because I couldn't keep up with how many times I had to go to the doctor I got like an eye infection which I saw my company doctor and he told me that I had conjunctivitis my eyes swole shut, it pussed up, I couldn't see anything out of it. They gave me an eye test. I couldn't even read. He said, what's the biggest line you could read? The E? I said, only because I know it's an E. Literally, that's the only reason I could read the E is because I know that it's an E already. And he was like, man, that's messed up. He said, I, I don't know what to say about that. You know, so he gave me some antibiotic drops. They pushed me off. Then I started with... Never sent you to an ophthalmologist? Never, nothing. He told me it was conjunctivitis, pink eyes going around. This is common. He said, the eyesight will come back. So, I took the drops. I went home, did the drops. Then I started with the vomiting. I would puke until I felt like my guts were going to collapse. I would throw up. Even when I had nothing in my system, I would throw up and throw up till stomach acid would come up. Then it would feel like my throat was on fire because the acid would burn my throat. And then once that would stop, I'd do this sometimes for an hour or two. And then that would stop and I'd think, okay, I ain't got nothing left. I'm okay. And I would be sweating, like sweat just dripping off of me. Then I would start with diarrhea. Then I'd sit on the toilet for an hour. Then that progressed into blood where I was vomiting blood and... I had diarrhea till I was passing blood and this happened for weeks and weeks this went on until I was so exhausted that I couldn't I couldn't do it anymore I called my grandmother I said mama I said I don't know what's wrong with me but I'm sick everything that I had been going through like nobody took me serious I guess they thought I was a hypochondriac because I kept going back and back telling a man something's wrong with me you know and finally 
when I had told my grandmother, it just so happened when I went to her office that day, they had the, the article that was written in the paper about the BP stuff and people having symptoms and stuff, and she had just finished reading it. She was like, Jamie, you really need to go get checked. Um, tell, tell me about the bouts of dizziness and how the dizziness is related to how your dizziness and your shakes and your high blood pressure and your Usually, stuff. like, I wake up in the morning, I, I feel bad. I feel worse in the mornings and at night than any other time. In the middle of the day, I usually feel better. But it starts out, I wake up in the morning, and it takes me a while. Usually, I get up, and in five minutes, I'm ready to go out the door to work. Now, I have to set my clock an hour ahead of time because I have to give myself an hour to get undizzy and get myself ready because I have to puke and sit on the toilet for an hour before I can go to work. <laughs> so I wake up dizzy. And then I roam around the house for a little bit. I wait for all of that to pass on my system. If I'm going to puke, if I'm going to go to the bathroom, I get dressed. And then the dizziness turns into a really bad headache. I get the really bad headache, which at first I thought it was because I wasn't eating breakfast early enough because I don't eat breakfast till I get to work. So I started eating breakfast earlier thinking that the headache had something to do with that, but it doesn't. No matter if I eat breakfast early or not, the headache still kicks in about two hours after I'm awake. From the headache, it goes to the blurred vision. Then the blurred vision kind of subsides, which I can't see out of that eye hardly, but it's worse at that time. Once the blurred vision subsides, I start with the vomiting, the shakes, okay. the diarrhea, the sweats. I go through this sometimes for a few after lunch. I'm going through this, and this is an everyday occurrence. You yourself in a position where, <coughs> where you actually were... Uh, um, where you're unable to move, you're conscious and awake, but unable to move. Does that happen to you very often? Several times. Like before I took the first <laughs> shot. I haven't had that happen to me since you started giving me the shots. But when I got, I was out of work for two and a half weeks because I really, that's when I called my grandmother because I, I couldn't even get out of bed. It was like I was living in a drum. Like I could hear everything going on around me. I knew that I was alive and I was functioning, but I couldn't respond. Like people would talk to me Good and I'd move. be like dazed out. <clears throat> even somebody even asked me Jamie did you start taking drugs because they were like what is wrong with you like you need to snap out of this what is wrong this is you see <clears throat> got a patient in the hospital right now he's having seizures when his blood sugar falls down like that you just get spaced out with it it's all the same stuff and I mean it's like sometimes I feel like I know that it's like people are around me talk like my crew is working and I'm just standing there and it's like, I can't remember what I was supposed to be doing next. I walk to the back to go get some other cooler and I'm standing there and I'm like, I got to walk back into the galley and see what I have on the stove. And it's like, bell peppers, that's what I was going to get. I have to, and that's not me. That's, I'm totally on top of what I do. I'm, I'm good at what I do. And I feel like sometimes I just can't pull myself, and it makes me cry. I, I go to my aunt's house every week when I'm off. I had to turn around three times the other day to get to her house. I had to pull over on the side of the road and call her crying, and she had to tell me how to get to her house. I was panicked by that point. I said, Aunt Lisa, I don't, I don't even know how to get to your house. I said, I'm on the side of the freaking road, and I don't know where I'm going. And she had to literally tell me, what do you see, and guide me there. And I do this all the time. And it was like I kept passing it up. And I knew that it was in that general area. And then I'd get to the store and I'd be like, she lives before this store. So I'd turn around and I'd get to the other convenience store and I was like, but she lives before this store. And I just, I couldn't, three times I turned around trying to get there and it upset me. And then once I get upset because I realize that I'm not right, it like, it gets me all worked up and then it's like, I can't, I can't function out there. Yeah, um, are, are there any other... Um, symptoms that you haven't mentioned that you think of i um i haven't had a menstrual cycle since i came back from grand isle when i first got to grand isle i had one and after about two months there i've never had another one and i've never had one since um i have i get really tender sometimes i feel like my joints like i guess what a person with arthritis would feel like sometimes i feel like I'm achy, achy, like flu symptoms, but in my joints, like how when you have the flu, you feel just, sometimes I limp because it feels like 
my joints and my bones hurt. I get and I'm tender like I'm normally tough. Like the littlest thing hurts me. Everything it feels like my my body's tender. If you found yourself with any shakes and tremors, I do. I do get the shakes really bad, and I get like this tingly feeling in my my feet and my fingers. Like they fall asleep sometimes, and sometimes like when I'm getting that. Like I can't breathe feeling because sometimes it feels like my chest is so tight I can't breathe in. If I breathe in too deep I get that cramp so I breathe like real shallow not to get the cramp. And I find at those times is when I'm more tingly. I get that picky feeling. Okay well this is absolutely fascinating. This is a... Um, thank See like you. right now I'm...